conscious capitalism is first it's very pro-capitalism uh, so people misunderstand that conscious capitalism is simply based on four basic pillars the first pillar is is that every business has the potential for a higher purpose besides only making money um, and that higher purpose will have something to do with the value creation a business does for its customers and its purpose will lie in that so Whole Foods its purpose is to is to help nourish people in the planet Google's higher purpose is to organize the world's information and make it readily accessible. So these are these are ways we create value for our customers. And I oftentimes think uh, capitalism's misunderstood as, as simply being about maximizing profits and m making money is a good thing, but it's the result of fulfilling its purpose of creating value for other people, uh, other stakeholders, and other and particularly customers. Uh, second, that there are stakeholders in an organization uh, that, are, uh, that are, they all are important, they all matter. The primary stakeholders of any business is first its customers, second its employees, third are its investors, fourth are its suppliers, and fifth are the communities that it's embedded in. And so when you're doing conscious capitalism, you're aware that these stakeholders are interdependent. And so, if let's say that um, Whole Foods is, uh, we're a grocery store, so our job, the management, is to hire the very best people we can find, make sure they're well trained, and then that those team members are, are flourishing and that they're happy in their work. Because the team member's job is to make the customers happy. But if they themselves are not happy and flourishing, they will not give as good a service. So. Happy team members results in happy customers, which results in happy shareholders. And so th there's an interdependence. And once you recognize that interdependence, you begin to manage the business differently. You manage it in such a way that you're seeking win-win-win solutions, solutions and strategies that are good for all the stakeholders. So you're just doing the business more consciously regarding stakeholders. Um, the third pillar is, is that uh, we have to create... Um, leadership that's not simply trying to line their own pockets, um, maximizing their personal gain, but that they are serving the purpose of the higher purpose of the organization and that they're serving the stakeholders. So we put an emphasis on sort of servant leadership. Uh, a conscious leader is one who serves purpose and stakeholders. And fourth, we want to create a culture where people, human beings, have to work and where they're flourishing and that they're, and the culture that, uh, that, uh, allows people to re to learn and grow and reach their highest potential. So purpose, stakeholders, leadership and culture, all done in a more conscious way. And that's the essence of conscious capitalism. So it seems like when a corporation or a company is sort of embedded in a local community, there's a kind of a natural accountability that happens, right, to the to the community, right? And um, I think it's been argued, and this is something I've actually frankly noticed in my life at, in, in various junctures, that when that relationship is broken somehow because the corporation becomes multinational or, or you know, it operates, uh, it begins operating without that kind of level of accountability. And it seems like, you know, especially maybe some of the biggest corporations are sort of in danger of this kind of... Uh, of this kind of a situation. So how, how do you get conscious capitalism in a situation where there, that connection becomes somewhat severed? Well, uh, I can talk uh, somewhat uh, well informed about my own business. I mean, Whole Foods has 530 stores and we're in hundreds of different com communities, mostly in the United States, but also Canada and the UK. So we know that we're embedded in local communities and all multinationals are also embedded in communities we have an impact on the communities that we're part of we don't live in some cyber world we don't live apart from everyone else we not only have local communities but we have a supplier chain a supplier network that's all around the world so we bought we purchase from thousands of different suppliers and growers and mostly in the United States but but also all around the world because we want to sell the highest quality natural and organic foods wherever we can find them. 
And so we feel a special responsibility to be a good citizens in the communities that we're in. And our philanthropy, the, it's, and, and creating jobs for people wherever we go, um, making sure that we are seen as good citizens in each community that we're in. I think business has a responsibility to be good members of the communities that they're part of and that they don't stand a part of it. That's a huge uh, mistake in thinking, that somehow their business lives in some other universe. It doesn't. It lives in the human universe, in communities where they have neighbors and friends, and there's therefore they have certain civic responsibilities, uh, just like every other citizen does.